So we are good to go. All right. Uh, good evening. This is the uh, Hallowell Review Committee, uh, Thursday, June 3rd, 2021 meeting. Uh, we will start with our first item on our agenda with a roll call. Mr. Nigerian. Here. Mr. Hallowell. Here. Mr. Gardner. Here. Mr. Cordova. Here. Mr. Simpkins. Here. Mr. Savini. Here. And Mr. Mayo and Mr. Bradford are absent as of right now. Hopefully they will show up. Uh, item on agenda number two, uh, public forum limited to 15 minutes. This is, again, uh, as I'll just remind everyone, an opportunity for the public to ask questions of us based on what our tasks are with regards to the Hallowell property, um, where we are in process, you know, if they have questions about um, the, the, uh, something like a survey or some other steps that we're going through. Uh, so if, somebody, if anybody has questions in regards to that matter, um, now is the time to ask them and go from there. I will ask that you use your uh, raise hand function on, on Zoom, please. Um, uh, not right now. Um, uh, nobody's waving, getting my attention. May I just want to ask one more time, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Again, if anybody has any questions at this time, this is the time to do it. Oh, Cynthia Roberts. Cynthia, thumbs up. Hi, thanks. I didn't hear what the prompt was. Uh, did you, is this like the good and welfare section right now? <laughs> this is just, this is the opportunity to ask questions of us based on our process with what we've been tasked with by the town council. Okay, thanks. And when you say ask questions, um, if we have comments, is that fine also? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and I just want to let you know it's hard to hear and like my volumes up all the way I don't know if other listeners are having a hard time hearing but the volume isn't great for me anyway. Um, yeah, so I just came to this uh, section of the meeting because I wanted to um, provide feedback on a few comments that were offered uh, last meeting. Um, I had given the feedback to this committee that um, residents would like this committee to be more gender equitable, meaning not 100% males. And um, I had to get off the call just before the call was ending, but apparently towards the very end of the call, um, at least one member of the committee um, advocated for um, proposing to the town council to expand the commission to make it be not exclusively male. And uh, that was Mr. Nigerian. And he pointed out that um, like, you don't know what you don't know. And in that moment, he was referring actually to including youth on this committee. And there, there were other comments um, such as um, Mr. Uh, Corvo saying, well, other committees have women on them, but that's not the issue being brought to this, this table. Um, upon a quick analysis of all of the boards and commissions in the town, it looks like there's just under 30% of the total numbers of people on the committees who are female. So that means the rest are male. Um, and the issue is, for this committee. And the issue is not exclusively about having one's voice heard. It's about um, actual direct representation at the decision-making table, not, not through the proxy of the people at the table. And I also heard one of the members, this is all, I just listened to this just minutes before getting on this meeting. But I, I also heard another member say, well, no women applied and that tells me a lot. And what I wanna to say to that is it does tell you a lot when no women apply to the most popular um, committee in the town. So people were saying like, this is the most people that ever applied for this committee and no women applied. So 
the truth of the matter is the, the committee and the town has to look at itself and say, what can we do differently to attract all people to want to be represented on this committee? So it's not the fault of the women who didn't apply to this that they're not there. It's actually a responsibility of our town to make our boards and commissions accessible to all people, including women. And I want to remind people in this space, if they're not aware, that back in January at a town council meeting, it was stated that the process of appointing people to these committees is political. That was stated by our town council president. It's on video and it is political. And of course it's political. So what I want, and that the, the idea was to find people who would be like on board with whoever was you know, in elected power. And I just wanna say, those are quite possibly the reasons why certain people did not show up to apply because they felt disenfranchised and they hoped that there would be more of a representation when the list came out of who was on it. And what I also wanna say is that um, residents noted once that list was distributed, that it was all male and residents immediately had a problem with that. And immediately we brought it like very respectfully and professionally, I have all the emails to the attention of our town council and our town administrator. And we were basically given talking points that sounded very similar as ones I heard in the May meeting of this committee saying, well, we have women on other committees. That, that's not acceptable, number one. And number two, it's known, it's demonstrated in the media, in the literature, that women are disproportionately bearing the burden of the pandemic right now in terms of educating our children, distance learning, et cetera. So it also could be a reason why women didn't apply that they are disproportionately caring for their families right now. That doesn't mean they don't deserve to be on this committee. That means this committee needs to go out of its way and our town government needs to go out of its way to engage diverse people so they feel welcome and encouraged to actually apply for this. And if the only ways that the outreach were done by the town was through the newsletter and the newspaper, maybe there's more channels to try and get people to be on these committees. So I, I don't, I disagree with the, the responses that were given that kind of excuse the fact that it's only men on this committee. And I thank the members who, um, and I know it's agenda number four on this meeting, you're gonna be discussing it. And I'm not sure whether there's an opportunity for residents to speak, which is why I'm speaking now. And I wanna applaud everyone for being thoughtful about this because it's not equitable and there's like no way to spin it. And it was brought to your attention, meaning the town council before this board ever convened. So there was an opportunity to do outreach and bring more people on. In fact, you expanded, whoever the town council expanded this committee to have representation from the planning board and from the town council. So we know it's possible to pause and expand a board. We know that that's possible. And women should not have to have our, our ideas and our wishes mediated exclusively through men. Women belong in all places where decisions are being made. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Mr. Chairman, I just admitted Alexandra Norton into the meeting. Okay. You want to disable the waiting room? I tried that. Um, I don't know if Carl can, can do it from where he is. 
that that's always the first thing I try to do. But it, for some reason, it the waiting room was not was not in bold, as if that feature isn't accessible. But yet, it was still checked off. Yeah, I can't uh, disable it myself. Right. So I'll just keep an eye on. All right, we'll, see, we'll keep an eye on. How, how's the how's the sound quality, Tom? It's it's good. It's always better with with a headset. Okay. Thanks, Tom. All right, well, if there's no other, uh, no one else that wants to come forward for uh, item number two, let's move on to uh, item number three, which we're actually going to just push till the next meeting. Uh, so everyone has time to review the meeting minutes from our last meeting. So we'll have a two for next meeting. Um, and then that will lead us right into uh, agenda item number four, for discussion, the membership of the Hallowell Review Committee, as as previously stated uh, during our public forum, this is just going to be the opportunity for uh, the members of this committee to just speak and, and talk and discuss this issue a little bit further. Um, I do have a few comments at, at the end of the, at the end, but I'm going to reserve my right to uh, hold those at, at the end. So if anybody else wants to. To just, I'm just going to leave the uh, floor open for anybody else that wants to uh, make their comments. Mr. Nigerian. Oh, I don't think we need to labor to any great extent. It's a straightforward uh, circumstance. We either and of course, I think the public realizes that we're just committee members. We do not have the authority to do anything other than to push it up the ladder to the town council, and they can decide what to do based on their own uh, decision making procedures. But uh, the reality is what it is. We know this with certainty. We know two facts that uh, a great number of people appear to have applied to volunteer for this committee, which is a wonderful thing. And also that none of those appear to have been. Emails. So you can just rubber stamp that as a circumstance and move on and say we did the best we could. But this is a di different type of committee. This is a committee whose primary focus is to get consensus from the community, to do something for the community. So it would appear reasonable to suggest that in order to get a consensus of opinion, it would be helpful if you had at least some attempt at, at representation whereby we are going to create the premise that we want people to accept. Uh, I, I just think that it's worthy of this committee to suggest, if it so chooses, to the town council that they reconsider the idea of appointing one or two females to this board that they can hand to who would be in a position to understand the uh, of the dynamics of the town and, and offer a diverse opinion. You know, we are all males and we all realize that there is a distinction. And if we're trying to get to the common ground, it's always best to have a common base. The only other suggestion that I would make if committee members feel that it's valuable is there's a lot of emphasis, emphasis to try to reach out to the youth, you know, whether we're going to do a youth center or a senior center or both. And it dawned on me, I said, would it be completely out of the box to suggest that we contact the high school principal and say, if you have one student who is exceptional, or female, male, it's not relevant, who is actively involved and sees the community for what it is, and they would like to participate, there's nothing better than grabbing that the social media get the involvement of the that quote unquote younger people, if they see that one of their own is actually participating with the adults who are making the decision. It's nothing to be afraid of. If anything, it could be beneficial. I just put that out there for consideration. Yes, I could just say I have talked to Tom to McGee and I asked him because they have an engineering program in high school. I've reached out to him if there's somebody in that program who may want to be associated with the committee because it's dealing with 
design, et cetera, et cetera, and he's looking for someone. So we, we I, that, that I have reached out for a younger person, uh, and especially one in the engineering culture. So I have put that in the record. That has got it. Does anybody else have any further comments? Please, this is Tebow. Um, well, first of all, as a former town administrator, female, as a former council president, female, and a senior and you know the chairman of the committee, um, I hear what the young women are saying with all due respect to everyone. But on my committee, I have six women and only one man on the senior advisory committee. So people, um, we all have busy lives. We all do, even seniors like myself and Bob. <laughs> May I, Bob? Um, but you know, I think if you really, really want to do something, you know, when I when I ran for office, you know, first on the council and then as town administrator, um, nobody looked at me like, oh my God, she's a woman, and and never did I say. You know, I was the second woman to be, you know, uh, a town administrator. You look at people in their qualifications, not at their gender or ethnic background or religious uh, persuasion or whatever. So um, it takes a lot of guts to stand up and run for office or just to really want to be on a committee such as yours. And I like to think that the senior advisory committee can be a valuable resource to you because you were saying young woman, he was saying young person, and I know Bob, you and I are seniors, but how about a senior? How about a senior? Um, because you know, and that's who I represent right now and I'm being an advocate for them and I've done it for 13 years. Um, and yes, for you, I was that mom. I was, you know, the hockey mom the gen mother, the Girl Scout leader, the little league person. I was that person and I value that. My kids had a wonderful education and wonderful experience. But now we have a bunch of seniors that have zero. <laughs> and only, um, only because, you know, I've kind of taken the bull by the horns and we have six classes now at Spelvis Hall, thanks to Aging Well Inc. and the great money that they have. But um, I guess the long and the short of it is, don't wear I'm a woman as a badge of why you did get something or you didn't. If, you know, if a young woman really wanted to be on your committee, they would have stepped forward. And you know what? If they don't like what the council is doing, then run for office next time and get yourself elected. You know? Uh, you know, and that, you know, I'm probably out of line, but I, I have to say it, you know, uh, people say to me, oh, you were the second woman, you were the second woman that was a town administrator. I remember there was the, the power women in Northern Rhode Island, Sue Manon, Sue Shepard, and myself, I'm like, we all got elected because we thought we could do a better job. <laughs> and they didn't elect us because we were a woman. I never vote for a woman just because she's a woman. And I never put a woman on, on any committee just to even out the score. You know, I mean, I assume, and I don't assume, but I read, <clears throat> excuse me, the credentials. You all have um, backgrounds, I believe, that make it useful and, and, and imperative to help make that decision. I have credentials as a senior citizen and that's a committee, and that's why they elected me chair. To give you that guidance that we all we talk about and that we voted upon. But you know, young women, stop whining. <laughs> Stand up and be counted. If you really want something, go for it. And don't, you know, I, I get really weary when I, I hear, you know, like the lieutenant governor, she's a woman. What are you doing? You know, you weren't the most qualified person and people on this committee. That's all. Thank you, Mrs. Zebra. Yes, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you for that. That was outstanding words. Um, though I agree with what much of Mr. Nigerian had to say. Um, I think we need to just look at the fact that Mr. Steve was sitting here in the audience tonight, and the fact that you don't have to be sitting at this table where we are to make a difference, right? And I think that's the message we really want to convey, regardless of if you're a member of this committee or a resident of the town of North Smithfield, everyone has a say in this. And I think if we were to compel as a request, the town council to review the makeup of this committee, in essence, we'd be saying it's only a mat, it's only a seat at the table that counts. And you know what? That's not the case. It's not our opinions that count or only count. It's the entire town. That's what we're trying. That's the message I personally and all of us are trying to convey. We want everyone to take part. And it doesn't matter if you're sitting where you are tonight, Linda, or if you're sitting up here. So I think the council did a great job putting together um, a, a notification and transparently appointing people to a board who showed they wanted to be part of it. And we want everyone else to be part of it too. You don't have to be sitting up here to do that. So thank you for your words. Mr. Corvo. Yeah, I just want to add one thing. Um, so when we initially decided to uh, create the Hello Review Committee, uh, we specifically decided to move it out of the nominations of all of the other committees to give it its own mind share, to give it its own um, its own front stage. And the fact that you know we're looking back now and saying, okay, well, it didn't really turn out the way that we wanted it. Um, let's try and you know fill a seat based on gender. Um, I don't know if that's the best solution because again, as it was brought up with the senior. Uh, with the senior advisory uh, committee, uh, the majority of that are, uh, are females. Uh, there are other committees where um, on the gender line, there were people that we appointed as town council that were way more qualified um, and they just happened to be women over men. So they took the initiative to apply. We then took the initiative as uh, town council members to review those qualifications regardless of gender and then we made that decision of what was the best for that committee for that advisory role so i think if we deviate from that with this i think it's setting the wrong precedents going forward and let's say we do appoint a female or two that now has to be built into the um committee itself so what do you do now that's stationary now two years down the road we're going to open up seven seats of people to apply but yeah we're always going to appoint two female i just think that sets the wrong precedence okay. mr chairman there's somebody in the audience okay. um uh, more and you have your hand raised Hi, thank you so much. So, okay, so the bottom line friends is, and I'm calling you friends because you are fellow friends and neighbors. And if I may just ask you to please look into your heart because this has nothing to do with, um, you know, what we're discussing per se. This is a community endeavor, which is a multi-generational endeavor, multi-generational, multi-gender, multifaceted so even though we may come to the board and present our ideas diversity always yields in value in terms of what this is going to bring to the community and i know that you may not have had the candidates but this is 2021 folks so what i mean by that is in an equity-based lens when you don't have representation in the board in particular this board, because it is going to be a community center for everybody. So youth, teenagers, the elderly, um, women, men, people of color, LGBTQ, that encompasses 
all of that. So if you're going to do your due diligence, which I know in your heart you want to do, I ask you to open your heart and consider this because this is something that you would set a precedent. I'm not gonna run for town council. This is not what I want. But what I want is to see, it's not about gender, it's about people's experiences, people's living stories. Because as a male, you don't know that I need babysitting or I want certain classes. And you may confide in your loved ones or your wives or your partners and get that information. But having people with diverse experiences is going to yield a very full, well-rounded story. And this is going to be for the community, by the community. So that I just ask that you think about that. And you reach out to your wives and you reach out to your sisters and your neighbors and you ask. I know that they may not have applied, but this is where we reach out. As in other boards, I served on the library board in North Smithfield. And they, I was sought out to be in the library board. Um, so that is an example of a way that we could be seeking out people. Um, we want to be invested in this just as much as everybody else. And it's not criticizing. It's just, it's just sharing our, our hopes for this, this idea and this dream that we want it to be. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm looking out here auditorium, we've got 17 chairs out here, okay? If anybody wants to come and be part of the meeting, come. Mrs. Tebow is the only person sitting in one of those 17 chairs. So if you feel that strongly, please come. And I'm sure our chairman will recognize you during the meeting to comment on anything that's being said. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Hallow. Um, I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, that the nine of us are going to decide anything what's going to happen with that problem. Right? I think we took a huge step forward last week when we sent out a survey to multiple boards to anybody, regardless of age, gender, sex, whatever. And Jeff, how many responses do we have? Uh, so far, I believe we have 229 responses. So 229. That's that's fantastic. In about two weeks. So I view our role as taking those responses, right, coming up with a consensus of what the town wants. 229 is much more powerful than nine, right? And our role is to sh take the town's opinion and shape it and bring it to a point where we can have a consensus from town, 229 people, and hopefully more before the end of the month. And then meet that with Weston and Samson and say, this is what the town wants. Can we do this? Like, our job is not to decide what goes into that property. It's just to shape, to, to narrow, or to bring in, to bring in the opinion of the town, and then marry or not what we can and cannot do with that property. So I think we took a huge step forward in engaging as many people as possible last week I don't know what more we can do. I'm sure there is more, but you know, everybody has ideas. Yeah, uh, Ms. Roberts. Hi, um, it's Dr. Roberts, and I wanna speak about something that was said about not whining by Ms. Tebow. And I, I wanna say that there, and there are people in the room right now many of us are participating online and it is still a pandemic right now and not everyone's child is vaccinated. That's a reason why many of us are staying away from group settings right now. So that's a perfect example of people need to get outside of their own frame and recognize not everyone's able to meet in person right now. So don't privilege people who can choose to meet in person versus others who are protecting their families. That's one thing I wanna say. Another thing is, it is not a tokenizing request that we're making. It's a representative request and there's a very big difference. And it's not whining 
because the fact that any of us are on this call right now, if and I'm going to name Engage in our Smithfield because we ask many people to fill out the Hallowell survey. We constantly share communications from the town to the community to over a thousand people to engage them on a lot of the issues in this town. We are playing a role in fostering community engagement and we are showing up at these meetings. And the kind of conversation that's dominating right now is to shut down the, the what we are bringing up about equity. And the other piece that I meant to say earlier and I forgot to say, but it's on behalf of a friend in the community and it absolutely relates to this discussion right now. And it's similar, it's building on what Alex was saying about moms and child care. One of our friends um, experienced a very upsetting act of racism in the park, in the um, Pachico Park yesterday. And she documented it on Facebook and shared it publicly. It had to do with a group of children using the N word. And our friend is a white woman with a multiracial family, with multiracial children. And she was very upset and she had to leave because her daughter was being exposed to kids using the N-word. And that, that example is the kind of perspective that's needed to inform creating safe and welcoming spaces like our Hallowell Community Center and gender equity and racial equity are all tied into each other and they are a community level factor. They're not, it's not just individual, like what do you teach your kids at home? And the other piece that I wanna say is running for office is one thing, sitting on boards and commissions is another. Being an engaged resident, showing up at meetings and asking questions and bringing new ideas and having a vigorous conversation is part of making your community better. So I'd, I'd appreciate, um, I'm correcting the, the perception that any of this is whining. This is actually improving our community. And we've encouraged people to send letters and to personally reach out to the Parks and Rec Committee and the paid staff person who oversees that to be aware that this happened because we want this issue addressed and we're interested, for example, in engaging the arts committee and other people to cre help create a visual environment that's more welcoming. Because this community does have a problem with exclusion, with racism, classism, and gender um, discrimination. And in order to create a community center that's welcoming for everyone, we have to admit the real actual issues that we have in our community. Thank you, Mr. Corbell. Uh, Dr. Roberts, I just have a quick uh, question to say, um, and I know you know you said that your organization within town, Engage North Smithfield, has over a thousand members. I'm assuming that the equitability of the members uh, is, um, is is pretty broad, uh, meaning it's not just all female and it's not just all male. I noticed that you do a good job, the organization does do a good job of communicating to its membership on Facebook, uh, certain things that are going on, uh, certain committees that are um, starting, uh, certain positions that are open. My question is, uh, if you engage your, your base of over a thousand members, regardless of, of gender, uh, and you've clearly publicized multiple times, not only uh, events that are going on, within the town itself, but more specifically, the Hallowell Review Committee and the application process, why didn't any of your female members apply? Maybe you're not doing a good job communicating <laughs> and making them okay. comfortable to apply. Right, right. Just and like, I'm asking. Right, I hear that you're asking me that. I know for a fact that during the general recruitment for boards, many people apply because they told us and some of those faces and names are currently on committees and it's not our obligation. This is all volunteer that we're doing it. The other thing is I already gave some proposed hypotheses about this particular committee having to do with the pandemic and women's um, ex exaggerated um, responsibilities, disproportionate responsibilities of childcare. And the other part is I already said that in January it was stated 
at a town council meeting that the elect the the appointments would be made according to politics that was stated out loud so it's possible the issue is not the onus is not on women not applying the onus is i I work, I, I'm a co-chair of a state commission called the Commission for Health Advocacy and Equity. In my role, we look at equity issues in the state and we advocate with the governor, with the directors of the different departments, Department of Health, Labor and Training, et cetera, DCYF, EOHHS. We don't blame the lack of diversity on the people who aren't at the table. We put the onus and the, the accountability on the entities that need to welcome those people. That, that's just like a known thing. If you're trying in, in circles that are trying to promote equity and representation and not tokenizing, if you're trying to have a diverse board, you need to do outreach. And we know that that happens with plenty of boards because people regularly say that they've been outreached to, to be on the planning board, for example. And the other thing I wanna say about gender equity on, on commit boards and commissions, the most consequential boards and commissions in our town are skewed towards being populated by males, almost exclusively. And it, the arts and the, L, the senior commission are more skewed towards female. Um, it should not be a point of ridicule for anyone. The point is to make it better. So giving this feedback is not to make people defensive, it's to make things better. The thing that, that gets frustrating is when we're giving feedback that's literally based in literature and public health planning and best practices. Tom Kravitz knows this, he works in planning. There are guides on gender equitable planning for communities. This is like all best practice. We, North Smithfield is out of step with best practice. That I. We have sent numerous links on this. We've been friendly about it. We've reached out personally so that it didn't, we didn't have to like defend our humanity in public or be chided and told to stop whining. And, and I think that, that that's really wrong because we're actually working really hard to try and have more voices and make this a more equitable community. And it, we're being met with resistance and, and dehumanization. And I think that's very sad and that's very inappropriate. All right. Um, Ms. Staples, I see that you had your hand raised. Um, I, I will say that um, I'd like Ms. Staples to be the last comment because we could be having this, this could be a, a whole meeting in and in it of itself. Uh, and we do have a rather lengthy uh, agenda. I want to make sure that we give appropriate time to all of these other items as much as we're giving to this as well. So, Ms. Staples, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Jeff. I will end then very succinctly with case in point. Here we are, a bunch of women in front of you, asking you for something and having our worthiness based on our gender debated at the table. I am so disappointed in some of the comments and responses that I've heard tonight. I'm so disappointed. I, this board cannot possibly represent me. They cannot possibly. Not this way. There has to be a serious change in the school of thought. North Smithfield is 50 years behind the rest of this state, which is 50 years behind the state of Massachusetts. We have to do better. I know that there are people sitting on that board that can do better. I know it. Do better. Okay. So there's a lot to digest with all of these comments. Um, so I, been thinking about this ever since it brought, got brought up to us at uh, a couple of meetings ago. And I, I've done a lot of talking to folks. Um, I've had a lot of interactions with, uh, I will uh, say that I've been talking a lot with my sister who has a very similar background to what Ms. Roberts does, uh, Dr. Roberts does, what Alex, it, uh, Ms. Norton and Ms. Staples have spoken to. 
We recognize that there is an issue. As it's been said, we will be working extremely hard to make sure that every voice is heard and listened to. And we want to be able to hear everyone so we can begin to build consensus. If there continues to be an issue, it will ultimately have to be addressed to the town council, as we do not have the authority to make any changes to the makeup of this committee, just as other boards and committees do not get to make that decision as well, like the planning board, zoning board, and every other board that is in this town. Again, I'm, I'm gonna direct everyone to start at the top. I, I know it sounds like I'm, I'm pushing, pushing, passing the buck, but ultimately it's going to start with a town council decision on how this board is made up, just like they make the decision of every other board that's in this town. While I support the equity, it's just out of our hands at this point. Having said that, we're now gonna move on to- um, Mr. Chairman, if, if, if the attitude is gonna be that we're not gonna entertain a motion, that's fine either then I think what Bob did by reaching out to the school committee or the superintendent or the principal now has to be rescinded because it wouldn't be we're breaking every precedent and every issue that was highlighted if we ask the principal to give us a name and then we say we'll accept the name and send it to the town council but that's what I mean we need to clarify that if you like to explain if you'd like to sit and listen and well, no, that's, that's I wanted to make that clear. That would be fine. And that's all we should do. Yeah, that's fine. But I, I don't know if it was clear when you said it. Was it clear to the principal? Okay, great. Well, that's what it yeah, then we'll leave it to you. Okay. okay. Then with that, we are going to move on to item number five uh, for discussion, the update from Weston and Samson. Uh, this past Wednesday, Chris and I had a uh, uh, Microsoft Teams meeting with Carolyn Wells of uh, Weston and Sampson. So I just wanted to uh, give everybody an update of what they've been working on, where they're standing. And then Chris, if I forget anything, please jump in and um, <laughs> jump in my side of the meeting. Um, so at, at, at our uh, meeting, we had spoke, uh, Carolyn is coordinating with Ray Pendergast from the DPW to get the assessments rolling. So uh, they, they are going to be present at the next meeting to give a draft update of what they found. If there's some big ticket issues that of items that they found were problematic, they're going to certainly let us know. But it will basically be a, a quick overview of what they found and in that and of their assessment. Um, and then um, also they will begin. Uh, I've asked them to start uh, outlining how the public charrette would work with, with um, what we want to accomplish, uh, what questions we can be asking. We're, we're gonna share the survey data with them once it's completed so that they have access to that, uh, so that they can start to um, help us formulate some more pointed questions to really um, make it a very productive public charrette. And then a couple of things that I did want to bring to everyone's attention as well. Um, based on the insurance report, we have, I did request that they give us a proposal for the indoor air quality testing, which the insurance would like to see. So that would be an ad service that we may or may not recommend to the town council, but that is uh, one item that I've asked for. And then uh, Tom and I were speaking and we had also asked for a uh, class one survey, which um, Tom, I don't know if you want to talk to the various classes of surveys because I can't speak intelligently about it, but. I know class one is a, a more in-depth survey, understanding where buildings are located. The class four right now, they, they don't, uh, requires them to not even go on site. They'll basically take um, the information from the, the town's GIS and understand you know, the, the bounds and the property markers and in that fashion, they'll look at the deeds and, and whatnot. Um, but the class one survey takes it a little bit further and starts locating buildings, um, um, include surveying, uh, a topographic line and everything. Yeah, I mean, the, the only difference with class four, 
isn't just going off GIS. Class four should be replicating the deed description onto a plan. And if there's any discrepancies, the deed will will drive what, what's correct. Um, and what and what we wanted to do is get just get a cost to see what it would be to do class one survey on particular points of the property that intersect with surrounding streets and neighborhoods uh, to see to understand if there are encroachments or things of that nature. So that's that's what it is. We're really asking um, Weston Sampson for a for a price on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I mean, and Tom, in talking with, with with Carolyn and her team, I mean, ultimately, this will be something that needs to get done eventually, anyways. <clears throat> it it really depends what you want to do with the property. You know, if if you want to really integrate this parcel with the surrounding neighborhood, then then yeah, that you should probably do at least class one on portions of the property where that's going to happen. You know, I, I think it's a very good idea, subject to review of cost. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, I play a significant difference between the two. Yeah, and it may be a question of when we decide it is worthy of that expenditure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, that's why I'm just. I want to bring it aware to everybody that we did ask for the, the added scope proposal so that we do have an idea of cost. And if we did feel at that time that we did want to recommend it to town council to add that on to their contract, we would have the ability to do that. Another question is here. I'm just curious, as you finish your budget week um, mm -hmm. with the update, it dawns on me that it might be wonderfully beneficial for all of us uh, to walk through, um, not into every nook and cranny if a building is suspect or if the HVAC system hasn't been tested, but to just get a sense as we walk around and let your eyes dictate to each individual what they see. Do you see fascia boards and structures that are obviously in decline even to a person who may or may not have extensive construction experience you know i think it's time if we can yeah, right, for it, and if the insurance things are all resolved that we as a board and if there are public meeting issues where we have to you know you can articulate that with the lawyers and the solicitor yeah but if we are able to walk the property as members of the committee exclusively so that we just give ourselves a current education to our own minds and eyes, mm -hmm. waiting as we're waiting for Weston and Samson to do their due diligence. Yeah, I think perspective is worth, it's, un, it's impossible what your eyes are going to show to you. I mean, I haven't had the opportunity to just get out of my car and walk around. And I haven't had it with each of us as we're walking, you know, may, Tony may see something, everybody may make a separate observation. So keep it in your mind, Mr. Chair, maybe we, it would be beneficial for us to have one of our meetings uh, short term on site. Yep. It doesn't have to be a lengthy meeting. Certainly. You know. Yeah. Yeah, to a follow up to what Paul was saying, do we know the assessment of damage that was done through vandalism a few weeks ago? I believe um, when they had the community, when I was down there for the community garden, um, just seeing what they were doing, it looks like it's just two windows that were on the, um, the administration building. It was two windows that had a camera in one of them. So that's how they got caught. Yes. Uh, to, to build on what Mr. Nigerian had to say, I totally agree that's a, a great idea. And like we talked about in the past as well, um, I know there are meeting violations uh, in a forum. It's got to be an open meeting, and it's a great idea to have a meeting that site. But not just the, uh, the structures themselves, but the entire property. And um, I have a question for Tom. Tom, do you know what the, uh, the wetlands delineation is right now on that? Do we have a pretty good idea of what the wetlands are and are they marked? That's actually the process. It, yeah, they're not, they're not marked yet, but uh, that's, that's work that's going to be happening soon. Uh, GI, the town GIS system will give you a general indication, though. Uh, if you look on the website, you click on the GIS button and just turn on the wetlands inventory, it'll give you some sense. Uh, but but some wetlands have moved uh, in, the, in in even the past ten or so years. I know here in Barville, we've seen wetland edges move as much as twenty feet. Um, so 
the more frequency in the rain events is is playing with the wetland uh, edges, but that's work that's going to be happening very soon, I believe, Jeff. Right? Yeah, yeah, it should be happening in the next couple within the next couple of weeks. Excellent, and that's that's where I was going with that. It'd be great if, if you know once we have a baseline for us to be able to monitor that and any any changes on the property and anything happening with it as we go forward. Yeah, certainly. So um, other than um, those other items, um, I do want to have the committee do some homework, start to prepare some questions that you guys think would be uh, pertinent to a public charrette. Um, just to start brainstorming some ideas. Um, you mean to ask of the ask of the Both. If you have questions for Weston and Sampson about their process, about how it will go about, um, or if you have questions that you want to ask specifically of the community. So, so both. Both of those would be uh, certainly welcome. And then I also, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I'm getting old. You're so young. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, who was it there? Maybe I'm sorry. The other topic that we were talking about was location of the public charrette. So um, originally, when, when uh, Chris, Tom, and I were talking with Carolyn, we were thinking it would be on site at some point. And then Carolyn brought up a very good point. What if we have rain? Um, so the other thing that I want to start to explore with either the town administrator or the DP, uh, our Mr. Pendergast from the DPW, if we can have access to a, a tent that we can put up in place so we can still have the charrette on site because I think we'd be doing ourselves a disservice if we had it anywhere else in town. Um, if, even if we had it up at, you know, if we had it at the middle school or the elementary school, we're on the other side of town. So it doesn't make much sense to do it there. And um, I, I'm somewhat hesitant to say we're gonna hold it inside of the cafetorium just based on all the issues with mold, the indoor air quality, on July 24th, it might be a really hot day. We want to make sure there's really no mechanical system as it stands right now. So I just want to make sure that we can have some sort of tent or if uh, folks start thinking about other means that in venues that we could potentially uh, be exploring. Yeah, it's kind I of think, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think what we should consider or find between now and that meeting so that the public is aware of this is procedural matters, you know, uh, whether it be liability based or uh, from a uh, uh, liability point of view, do we want, do we not want the attention of the people to be walking around to see the structures or do we want them primarily to hear the presentation uh, and then walk around at their leisure if they so choose? as opposed to distracting and spending an hour and a half trying to track people down and say, let's hear what Weston and Sampson has to say first, then you can walk the grounds, or do we even want to take the liability to the town mm -hmm. of allowing people, if, they, if they're not allowed in the structures, that's one thing, then they just walk around the property and they can come to whatever conclusions they want. But I think we should solidify in our minds what our procedure is going to be so that when you start the presentation, the public is aware that they either are or are not at this point. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to say that that won't happen once we get a better sense of if five of the buildings are likely to be raised, then there's no reason to look at them. Yeah. And that may not be a decision that's made in a few more months, but I think we want to make sure we're focused when we get there and the people have the right expectation of what will occur. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So I, I think what we might do, and by the time that we hold the public threat in the end of July, July 24th, um, we'll have some structural assessment and some more information from Weston and Sampson. So I think what we could probably do is actually schedule a tour, an official tour as part of that, where we're taking people around and whether we're presenting information or Weston and Sampson is helping with that. You know, we might we might do that first, you know, schedule a 15, 20 minute walk of the property and then sit down and, and do the charrette where we're actually when we did the last one, I think it was 2019. Was it close then? I think it was pretty lucky. Yeah, it was the March, it was two weeks before everything shut down. So it was March 2020. 
Right, but they had they they opened up some of the buildings. They did, because I walked through the building. Yes. They closed some of them because they had raccoons, and right. they closed some other ones because right. it was mold. But we met we met in the cafeteria. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so I'm I'm just I'm just thinking if we're thinking about of the opportunity for people to walk through the buildings, then perhaps we could be in the cafeteria if if the buildings are sufficient that you can walk in them. I think we should, should find that out first before we go through the renting a tent. Now, however, I think DPW has got a large white tent, which they use the pumpkin fest. So we could probably get them to set that up to save money, okay? Mm -hmm. Just thought, yeah. Um, I would, if DPW does have a tent, I think that would personally would be the best option. Trying to get a tent right now is near impossible. <laughs> um, so don't think of renting a tent because you would have to have booked it back in probably February or March with all of the uh, events that are going on. Um, but I think to be fair to, to everyone, um, it would probably be best to do everything in our power to try and hold it outside. So if DPW does, uh, does have a tent, uh, and they can set it up. I think that would be the best solution. Um, as far as going into the buildings, uh, I mean, anyone can take a tour right now, right? I mean, you could walk through there and you can look in the buildings and as long as you don't break anything on camera, you're respectful of the property. Um, you can see the, this, the conditions of the buildings having uh, just from the outside, the, the stuff that's been left behind. Um, it, it's, it's very eerie to walk through and see desks and copy machines and papers and, and shelves just left behind as if one day people just decided to to leave so eventually we'll have to we or the town will have to make a decision on what to do with that um and i lost my train of thought but yes a tent let's just say this try and try and get a tent okay um so that that's where we are with west and sam so they're, they're chugging along um, but unless anybody else has any uh, other comments, we can move on to our, our next item for uh, Jeff. Just real quick, um, I don't know if you, I don't know if I missed it, and missed it and everything. But um, did we decide? Because I, I think we were trying to get um, the the uh, uh, liaison at Weston and Samson to have a meeting with us to answer any specific questions we have. Is that that's going to happen next 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 meeting? Yeah, it'll be so. Um, at our last meeting, we determined that they're going to be uh, showing up for our four meetings for June 17th, um, July. June 17th, July 15th, and then two more in August, uh, two meetings in August so that they can do their, um, I'm sorry, June 17th, July 15th, August 19th. And then they'll have their final presentation at our first meeting in September, where they'll present their findings and, and we'll discuss our next steps. So that makes up our four meetings to the committee. Yes. Okay. I was going to leave it to you to determine when you'd like them to go to town council. Yeah. Um, but it's never, it, it might be helpful, maybe not. Would it be possible to have us in Samson, our contact person, consider giving you to distribute to us kind of a uh, talking points so we can anticipate you know what are they going to discuss so that in our sure. minds we're already formulating oh i'd like to address this we'd like to address that simple not just bullet items this is what we're going to talk about yeah all, sure all of our yeah and uh, uh, almost a meeting agenda that's what it's yeah essentially perfect okay so that is it for um, Weston and Sampson. So uh, the next item is uh, for discussion number six, update on the community garden. Uh, so uh, a couple Fridays ago, they were uh, starting to shovel manure. And I took my son down to see how they were doing on the 90 degree weather day. And I just wanted to publicly um, thank them for being down there breathing new life into the property, which it so desperately needs. And I asked um, Ann, Lily, and Cheryl Mar Marindola for the names of the volunteers. So I'm just gonna read them out so that they can act, get the recognition that they deserve for 
shoveling manure on the 93 day <laughs> and all the their other all the other other wonderful work that they're doing down there. I think it's great. So uh, we have Ken Pelequin, Lisa, Lisa Sparkin, Mark Forte, Martha Sheen, Megan Gilbo, Michaela Knott, Jennifer Keith, Jeanette Hool, Guy Wheaton, Aaron Bradford, Ryan Lafierre, Bill Lingport, Larry Mar Marilyn Nolan, and John Lilly, so, and uh, Cheryl and Ann. So thank you all to all of those volunteers that have been taking time out of their day to, to again, like I said, breathe life back into the property. So thank you. So um, on to item number seven for discussion, consideration, and action, the progress of the initial survey. I'm actually going to hand this over to Chris. Uh, we put it live uh, the, the day, almost uh, the day after we had our initial meeting on May 20th. It was shared through uh, a, a bunch of different venues. Um, we reached out to the Valley Breeze, NRI Now, the North Smithfield Heritage Association. Uh, I reached out to Mr. Pepin, uh, the lead guidance counselor at the school department who sent it out to the high school students. Uh, it was shared on social media, and I've asked that it be included in the town newsletter for the next four weeks when it does uh, wrap up on June 30th. So, Chris, I will hand it over to you. Sure. And uh, just give me a minute, I'm going to Carl to share my screen. I put together kind of a top line report of where we're at so we can all get a sense of what people are saying here. Okay, hold on. Let's try it now. All right, so um, all of the responses are as of a couple days ago. Um, so I've taken a couple of days and have crawled through all of these, all of these comments and tried to make sense of them. So as of a couple of days ago, we had 224 responses. Um, as Mr. Porter said, we're up to 229 now. So um, there was a great burst of activity at the beginning. It's kind of died off. And hopefully we can um, kind of republish it. And I think the goal is to keep this alive through the month of June. So um, you know, we're, we're only a couple of weeks into this. We have a whole other month to go. It'd be great to see a lot more responses. Um, this is a map of all of the responses that we've gotten in town, and that is not a hospital, that is Hallowell uh, marked off. So um, just to give you a sense of where uh, we're actually seeing things, I don't know if you know there's anything to be done with there or any specific outreach. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on our screen here in the room, but I'll share this with all the members afterwards, and you can uh, get as nerdy with all this data as you want. So we asked three things on the survey. Uh, the first question that we asked was a very simple one. Do you want to keep or sell the property? And um, overwhelmingly, people said that they want to keep the property. So only 12% of respondents are interested in selling it. 88% want to keep it. And throughout this, this deck, I have uh, pulled out some quotes. Uh, from people who responded to give you a sense of what they're saying. These are not fully representative, but um, it's, it's, you know, it, it puts a little bit of a personal spin on it and lets you actually hear from the community themselves. So second question was a little bit more in depth. We said, what would you like to see from this property? And um, there were some common themes that we saw. Um, so this is a word cloud. Um, we identified a lot of the keywords that people were saying in their responses, and you'll see some things that immediately jump out because they were mentioned a whole lot. Community center, senior center, park, playground, camps, community garden. These are things that were mentioned over and over throughout these 200 plus responses. The takeaway is that most of the respondents want to see some type of community center. And they express that in different ways. And a lot of folks weren't very specific in what that means to them. So 
Um, you'll see there were mentions of community, the words community center by 30% of the respondents, senior center at 28%, youth center, 6% of people who responded said that, and then a more generic multi-generational space, 6%. So you can imagine some of those, those other categories, senior, youth, multi-generational, they might be wrapped up in community center. People might just not be as specific with what they're looking for. So two thirds of the people that said these things, they actually weren't very specific about what that meant to them. And what we saw were things like this, you know, just community center, senior center, senior community center, community center, maybe for seniors, maybe for kids, maybe both. So, but there's, there's no real detail about what this means to them. Some people went into a lot more detail. They gave some ideas, you know, they want meeting rooms, they want rental spaces, they want, you know, kitchens, and all kinds of things. But I think the takeaway from this is that it's, it's gonna be us to, to, it's gonna be up to us to extract from the community what they actually mean when they say a community center or a senior center. What does that mean to people? So that's gonna be, I, th I think, a big task for us to really dive into that. And, you know, help to figure that out. So another big takeaway that I, I found was that recreation is mentioned in all kinds of ways. It's highly desired. So um, things that were commonly mentioned together were just general, you know, recreation space that came a lot with, you know, people talking about a playground, a park and green space, walking trails. Um, more, some people wanted more sports fields or even a sports complex, uh, dog park, swimming pool, splash pad. Um, I mean, the good news for us is that a lot of this stuff is not very expensive. It's all outdoors and, you know, this could potentially be things that the town tackles um, pretty quickly and easily once we have an idea of what the site is going to be. So, you know, if if we get to a point where we're thinking about, right, this is a phased project, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, um, a lot of what residents are looking for could be done as a phase one type thing. Also interesting here, um, and this is, you know, anecdotal, my wife, she was proofreading this for me, and she said, oh, a dog park, that's a great idea. So we've asked people for their input without having any baseline, without them having a baseline for what this could be. I think once we start having a conversation with the community and it's not just a one way, you know, what do you want this to be? People are gonna see some of these ideas and it's gonna change how they think about it. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this evolves over time as we go through different rounds of, you know, interaction and conversation with everyone. So this is uh, you know, an example of somebody who wants a community center and went into a little bit more detail about what that actually means to them. Um, another takeaway is that people want to gather and they want ways to connect with their neighbors. So what does that mean? Um, You'll see the numbers here get a little bit lower. And I think that this is, you know, it's one of those things that people didn't think to add this. Once they see it, maybe more people will say it, but you start to see, you know, that the ideas kind of get a little bit more disparate here. So you'll see community garden. Um, and I, I wrapped some of the things up into different categories that I thought made sense. And by the way, we'll share all of the responses with everybody and uh, the public so that everybody can go through all of this and hopefully see for themselves and you know if you don't like the way that I've done this uh let me know <laughs> so <laughs> um you know arts culture concerts uh a few people mentioned theater uh a place for town and community events um that you know a lot of folks felt that, that was really lacking farmers market craft fair you know food truck events meeting rooms all this stuff um and by the way, these are against 224 responses. So when you see something like 1%, that's you know two or three folks who are, who are mentioning it. Something like 7%, you're looking at about 15 to 17 people who, who said that particular thing. And these numbers will change over time, um, which is why you know, we're using percentages here to represent all of this. This is another great response around um, you know, the kinds of things that 
what it would be for. Just generally really interesting to see all, all of this feedback start to come in and how people think about it differently. So another common theme, um, not as prevalent, but some folks are interested in municipal services on the site. So this is things like police um, station or substation or public safety complex of some type, fire station, a uh, few people mentioned that. Uh, moving municipal buildings to the site, uh, which I feel like our town just went through that process. So. <laughs> Uh, school. Uh, some people would love to see it continue to be a school, uh, especially if the town population grows. They, a couple of people mentioned, um, you know, crowding, and uh, so it's something to consider there. <clears throat> this is the kind of response I love. Lots of ideas. <laughs> And a few people mentioned that tree, don't touch the tree, is what they said. <laughs> the tree's gotta stay, whatever we do. Uh, so this is a little bit tough to see up here on our screen, but um, other things that were common to mention, daycare and youth camps, 8% of folks. Uh, commercial and retail use. So some people said small shops, other people said put up an office park, 6%. Um, housing, affordable housing, condos, 5%. Um, early learning center, and a few people are interested in uh, kind of memorializing Hallowell. They mentioned it um, or using it for some type of town heritage site. So um, something to consider there. And 5% uh, of people mentioned wanting whatever happens there to generate revenue for the town. So in the negative, what would you not like to see from the property? That was our third question. <laughs> and most commonly, people said that they do not want to see condos, housing, or commercial uses on the property. So what does that mean? We saw industrial, uh, people were worried about, you know, waste uh, polluting the site. They were worried about a new Dutch of Donuts. Uh, they were worried about an office park. <coughs> And uh, condos, I think, I, I've grouped it with housing, but I'm pretty sure that condos was the most frequently mentioned thing in the, what do you not want to see on the site? Uh, one, one comment in all caps, take that for what, what you know. Um, a lot of people didn't want to see the site go unused or just deteriorate. Uh, a few people were worried about crime, um, this survey was launched, you know, in the wake of the, the vandalism that we saw, so that was top of mind for some folks. But uh, they just wanted to see something done with the site so that it, it wasn't wasted property. Uh, and then specific things that people said they do not want on the site. And, and what you'll see here is that it's in direct conflict, some of these to uh, some of the things that people did want to see on the site. So police and public safety complex, 6% of folks. Solar, uh, that came with a lot of exclamation points in some cases. Uh, any non-community focused usage. So a lot of people talked about commercial usage or um, selling it to private entities. They wanted to remain focused on the community. Uh, and then a few people mentioned, you know, single being a single use site, so just a senior center, just a, a youth playground or something. They wanted it to be a site that the entire community could enjoy. This is a great example of that, that comment. Also, very important that whatever's there is open from eight to eight. Uh, some folks are worried about cost. So what's this going to do their taxes? Are we going to have to use a bond to pay for it? Um, and this goes back to, you know, similar 5% of folks want to see this generate revenue. So something we should be mindful of, you know, whatever goes in there. What do you not want to see from this property? Something that costs more than it brings in. And this is, to me, 
a perfect example of some of the challenges that we're facing. 3% of residents said they want to see the buildings knocked down. 3% of residents said they want to see the buildings left standing. So <laughs> we'll get them in a room, they can fight it out, see what happens. Uh, and then just to end things, um, kind of a pointed comment from someone that whatever goes there, they don't want to see how well we divisive our community is small and we should work together to find something that benefits the town. Great, thank you, Chris. So um, that it was exciting to see when we did share the survey, I would keep hitting the refresh button just to see all the responses that were coming in. It was, it was it made me feel really good that people are actually taking the time to fill out the survey, to go through motions, and really start to get their thoughts down on paper. And then we can now, in turn, take that and build some consensus. Now, the reason why Linda is here is to help us reach out to those that do not have a computer and how and offer her suggestions and some recommendations of how we can get some more, a lot more voices heard. So I'm going to give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, yes, I spoke with Jeff because, uh, first of all, 23% of, of um, folks in the town of North Springfield are 65 and over. So, and amongst those folks, we have four senior housing. We have Deerfield, we have Gatewood, we have Colonial, and we have which one I missed one? Uh, the Meadows. Yeah. The Meadows. Um, and, and amongst those folks, um, many, I can say many, might not have a computer or access to internet. Um, and so I think we're missing a whole bunch of people that would like to, to uh, have their voices heard. So what I recommended when I spoke with Jeff and I'd be willing to help with this um, because I know the seniors. I have a pulse on the community. I've had it for 13 years now, but um, if we could have a printed version, and I've already asked some of the folks that um, uh, attend the classes at uh, Scouters Hall, if they would help with that as well, you know, I would be willing to bring them and go to the board of housing um, for developments for seniors uh, and bring that to them. And also, um, you know, I have folks that uh, come to the class that live at Water Woods, they live at Silver Pines, and, and actually some of them are still in their own homes in the community. Uh, we found this, you know, during the pandemic and everybody was at home, we found that it was really difficult to bring programming to them. We were using Zoom and YouTube and all of that, but, you know, maybe they didn't have a computer access and then we thought well, we could get them laptops but they probably won't know how to use them so i think to get you know everyone involved like you said um somebody said you did that you know for the high school students got information on this so that they could voice and that's very good but i think the seniors you know we do not do anything in this town for seniors we really don't we spend zero dollars zero dollars on seniors. Uh, I believe I have uh, Tony, I think $2,500, I think in the parks and rec budget, which I've had for what, how many years now, four or five years to present what I present there. Not I mean, aging well uh, to pre present those classes there. Um, you know, and you know, my, my, the committee that I chair, uh, our mission is to provide programs and services for seniors in North Smithfield to maintain an active, independent lifestyle in the community. And, and they wanted to call Hallowell, just Hallowell Center, just the Hallowell Center. And at our last meeting, they voted unanimously to designate a place for adults 55 and over to gather to get these programs and services. So you know where I'm going. <laughs> but, um, and you know, the naysayers will say senior center, who that's not the way to go. Um, but I can tell you that we have 85 people that are members of the Lincoln Senior Center. Another 29 people that are members at the Gloucester Senior Center. 
we have over 100 people that are members and take part in this, the services that are offered at the Wisconsin Senior Center. And we could go on and on. So I certainly think, you know, to give them a chance to speak. And you know, a senior center that I have in my mind, the vision that I have, does not exclude everyone else. A food pantry could be there because you have built-in volunteers, because we do that with seniors to give them a sense of purpose. It could include intergenerational events with the kids. We've done it in one socket, you know, with Flag Day, with uh, a veterans appreciation dinners. Uh, so we've included the kids in it. So it doesn't have to exclude other people. But right now we're at Scouters Hall and we thank uh, Ray that makes it available to us and we're there um, four days a week offering six classes uh, because we have grant money. We have grant money. And the other thing that with the senior center, just to think about it, every year, every town and city in all of Rhode Island gets a legislative grant for their senior center. Smithfield doesn't have a senior center. We didn't get one. And that's been going for quite a while now. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But, you know, I, I, I've taken a minute of your time, but I really would help with the survey. If, and I know print, you know, I know it's old school, but, um, you know, we could, and we do all the computer classes too at the senior center. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, I, I think that way you'd get, you'd hear from everyone, you know, all the seniors. So, and I thank you, Jeff, for inviting me here. And I'm glad I came too. This is very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Linda, can I ask you a question? Sure. There's going to undoubtedly be a senior center of like at Howell. Does it have to be how much? Does it have to be a hundred percent? If we had a hall, what percentage of the time do you think the seniors would be used? Well, most senior centers are open every day of the week and there's programming going on all day long. However, it can be like for I'll just give you a for instance, what I've been doing is you know, I've been connected with Aging Well for all the senior services, and it's at the Winsocket Senior Center. Aging Well people are not Winsocket employees. We're not municipal employees, but we provide all the programming there. So we have programming every single day. It's not just education, it's not just exercise, it's educational events, it's all kinds of things that go on for dietary clinics. Uh, vision uh, screenings, phone death. I mean, we do it all. We do it all. However, at night, people still use it at night. You know, uh, there might be an event that is, that is held at the senior center, but it does not exclude things from happening at night. And many of the senior centers are doing just that. They're, you know, the seniors have it in the daytime because they need a place to be, right. to call home. First right of refusal, you know, if you, you know, we don't have that at Scouts. We're guests there and we're happy to be there. It's great. We don't go there on Wednesdays because the municipal court and probate court and I don't want to get schedule something and make a mistake. But does that answer your question now? Yeah, because at Scouts you've got Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, seniors, and your support. Right. I guess what I'm oh, saying. Oh, probate court too. The probate court too. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is if you answered it. So the seniors may be there doing activities till six, but then oh, other they groups. Sick. Most of them are broke up. Okay, then, but then if you don't see a problem with there being other activities. I don't see it at all. I had told you before, I think a food pantry there would be a wonderful thing because one of the things that we do is, because you know, we, we also uh, manage the Meals on Wheels, which includes North Smithfield. Mm -hmm. We coordinate and distribute throughout all of Northern Rhode Island. But a food pantry there, you would have volunteers right there because you give them everyone a sense of purpose. Once you're retired uh, and you lose that sense of purpose, it's, it, people get depressed. So that would be, personally, I would like to see a space for the VFW, for the veterans that are older. Uh, Christine Yarn had said, if you want to know how your veterans are doing, look to the senior centers look to the senior centers. So it's really important. And one more thing that I think was the biggest thing that struck me during this pandemic, most seniors 
counted on their senior center during the pandemic. They could call there and register for the vaccine. They could call there and talk to somebody. We had two suicides in Gloucester because the senior centers were closed. And, and so those were the seniors, the ones up in the community that were kind of left by the wayside. And these are the folks that depended on their senior centers and we don't have one. You know, I got called at home. Uh, you know, they called Winsaka, and I know what Winsaka did and many did. They would get a list of maybe 10 people and they would reach out to those 10 people, every different people every day so that they could feel connected. We don't have that. We don't have that. And you know, in closing, I'll just say, the absence or presence of a senior center speaks volumes about the community. And we don't have one. Chair, I just want to add something. Uh, thank you for, for saying that. Um, so, you know, I, I think a senior center, I, I actually, I love it. I think a senior center would be phenomenal. I think that, you know, for the longest time, North Smithfield, in many ways, has always come in second place. And we've lost residents for various reasons to other towns for their amenities. And I think we've, we're now starting to understand that when you come to a town, not only do you come for the school systems, right? We've done really um, a phenomenal job in increasing our level of academics and our school system, right? People are flocking to this town, not only for the community environment, uh, the housing, uh, but the school, and yet all these other things are still in second place. Uh, so I think not, the nine of us, but really this town really needs to come together, regardless of age, gender, um, ethnicity. We really have the ability to come together as a town and take on those tasks with the senior center or community center or other things that we can use at, on, on the Hallowell property to actually be in first place, just like we've done with the, with the school. Um, so I, I think it's an awesome responsibility that we have. And I think we should do anything that we can uh, to make sure that that happens. Thank, thank you. And you know, I have to tell you, you know, I kind of came out of retirement to do this <laughs> um, because I am 77 years old. So, um, and I'm busy, I'm as busy as I was when I was 40, I think, these days. But as I'm mentioning to these classes that, I'm, that we're teaching, that I'm, I'm my mission is to get us a senior center and they're saying like, well, it's about time, you know, yay. And one lady, I want to play bingo. My husband said, she won't let you play bingo. She's trying to have you exercise and lose four pounds. But no, bingo is something else that they do. You know, we try to do, we've got the boomers, the younger ones, and then you've got the older seniors that might want to just uh, have lunch or watch a movie or play bingo or whatever. But, um, you know, that, that I came out of retirement and said I'd be on this committee to, to, to you know, to work towards that. And, and, and any help I can give you all um, with the survey, or with anything else, you just want to hear from me, you know where to find me. Thank you. Jeff, thank you very much. Yes, um, to your comment about uh, seniors needing help filling out the survey, Look at all of us are sitting up here with devices, right? Um, I'll volunteer myself. I don't know if anybody else will, but would it be worth us going there and sitting there for a few hours at the table? They can come down and sit. We could build a survey. I'll get them. You know what? Let me find out. I can ask. I'll ask. I will ask. You know, with the tablet. I'd, I'd be glad to find out for you. Anything to get their voices heard. And yeah. I'll let you know, Jeff. Yeah, that's okay. that's a big task, Linda. And, but, and certainly, um, if, if your group is going to help you, that's a good thing as well. Yeah. But you know, don't don't um, stay away from from asking for help from us as well. Well, we can. Well, I, Jeff offered your your help already, <laughs> and, and I said okay. Seriously, <laughs> I, I, I sit there for a few hours. Really? Right? Okay, just, that's thank you. Um, thank you. Well, then, in or type four or more. even at a meeting place, maybe. Yeah. Like you know, Scottish Hall or something, say if you wanna. Yes. Okay. Let me find out and I'll get back to Jeff. Uh, second, okay. uh, the second thing is that I, I think I mentioned this before. Um, 
South Kingston built a community center, and it basically is everything that we're talking about. It's run by the seniors during the day. Um, they have everything from senior center to community center, outdoor parks, sports, everything in one facility. I think it may be worth us reaching out to somebody in that community to have them come up and talk about the process that they went through and also how they run that facility, what they do today, you know, what successes they had and what challenges they had. So I think they're for a tournament for my son's basketball team. It's a beautiful facility. Walking parks, dog parks, uh, playgrounds, basketball courts, swimming pools, meeting space, gym rooms, everything. It's everything we talk about. Well, so, so they had to have a real community effort to fund that as well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that becomes to learn about that as well. Exactly. Now the, you know, the thing is, when the, all the senior center directors all get together, so we're very familiar with all of them. Um, and they have a beautiful, beautiful senior center in it. And you know, that's why I think the group that I chair said, call it the Howell Center. <laughs> so it still memorializes Dr. Howell. Um, but, um, you know, it, it stays, I think it's a good name for it, the Hallowell Center, and, and it could serve a lot of people. Certainly. It, and so this is just one of the examples that I want to bring to everyone's attention that the Hallowell Review Committee is not doing this in a box. We've already spoken with, with the Parks and Rec Commission, we're speaking with the, the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee. We are viewing this as a very collaborative effort. And we are not looking to leave anyone out. So I just want to underscore that, like I said, this whole effort is a collaboration. And if we don't collaborate, it's going to lead to failure. So I just want to, again, underscore that. I want to thank you for coming and thank you for your time to come chatting with us. And thank you for offering to help make sure that we do hear these voices. Um, because again, we'd be doing everyone a disservice if we left things online and not accessible to everybody. So thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> uh, to follow up to Linda's point um, and, and the survey that we had seen, I think when people mention community set, uh, senior center, I think it's important to recognize that um, having a senior center is not to the exclusion of other groups. Um, I think it is, there, there are, the groups have certain times when they meet seniors, mostly during the day. Uh, if you take Cub, Cub Scouts or, or any Scouts that are at night, particularly when children are in school, a lot of their activities are, are afterwards. So um, I, I think if you just say senior center, it's not really appropriate. It's, it's more multi-use. You gotta think of it as, as a multi-use facility. Um, and obviously we'll go by the will of the people how we reach out to people. I think we've done, uh, we've had a good first step in reaching out to people and we'll continue to get that feedback to kind of refine that vision. Um, to Frank's point, um, I can do my best to try and reach out to somebody in South Kingstown. I made a connection with um, a woman in, uh, who served on the town council, is in recreation with me. So um, she may be a resource. If not, I know um, a couple of people down in South Kingstown, so I can ask around and see if there's somebody that's willing to speak. If we have a, a time where we would want to invite them in when we reach that point. Um, so just let me know how I can be of help with that regard, too. I think if you shoot off an email after this meeting, well, we can get them get talking. I, I think the more talking, but the more listening that we hear from other people, um, North Smithfield is clearly not the first town to go through creating a place for the community, a place for seniors, a place for youth. We are not the first ones to be doing this. So the more that we can learn from our surrounding communities, learn what worked well, but also learn what didn't work well, uh, we'll probably be doing us a, uh, we'll be doing ourselves a disservice if we try to you know, go this alone and not take the advice from other professionals that have gone through this process. Mr. Chairman, Alexander North. Alexander, Andrew, are you there? 
Yes, thank you so much. So I just wanted to add to the discussion of financing, you know, this center. Um, so I know that most of you, I think some of you have attended the 2019 Hallowell uh, Town Council meeting in person that took place before COVID. And one of the things that was mentioning that mentioned during that meeting was financing this sort of endeavor. And one of the things that I think Jeff, you yourself had stated, given your career expertise, is to dream big and not be concerned with money because we can totally utilize incubator spaces. So the idea of funding these, these sort of um, centers and resources could be funded through incubator spaces. There's one such incubator space in Providence. And we also, I think I watched the video and I recall the North Smithfield Heritage Association, um, in particular, Jeff Harris, who is known to um, acquire multiple grants for historical property purposes. And he actually suggested that if this property were to be designated as a historical site, that would yield you the opportunity to um, you know, apply for multiple funding sources or grant sources. So what I ask is that, you know, we don't limit ourselves thinking about the dollar amount. Uh, and we really sort of expand on that because as you know, COVID is ending, but there's a multitude of companies who are looking to have their workers work from home. So being able to rent a space, a seminar, an office space would be a wonderful way of yielding space. And I would want to add to the story that yes, our seniors are very important in our community and so are the youth. So the youth are experiencing very high um, depression rates right now. And if they're not in you know, school sports or team sports, they feel pretty isolated themselves. So having a, you know, options for other resources in the community would be of value as well. Um, thanks so much for listening. Thank you. Okay, um, so I think with all that said, all that information, we can move on to our, our next. One quick question. Oh yeah, sure. I don't know, should we consider uh, like a tiered follow-up survey, taking the uh, uh, most relevant statistical inputs? And I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. Now what you're saying to the people is, okay, we got an initial response. For those who responded, you know, we can fine tune and give you what we have so that 25% of you, 30% of you. And so now it becomes a little bit more focused. So when we try to interpret, uh, I don't know your expertise is in this, do we benefit by a second tier or no? Yeah, I, I think there's value in that. And I think the timeline around this actually works out pretty well. So. I would recommend that we keep this initial survey open for June as, as we get pointed to, kind of keep it open-ended, um, you know, continue outreach to groups that we haven't heard from yet. Um, and then, you know, one of the things on this agenda item is uh, special consideration and action. Is there anything that we should be doing to increase outreach? Should we have printed forms available at town hall if somebody wants to stop by and fill it out or something like that? But keep this open through June. That'll take us, it'll give us time to look at all of it, understand it, it'll give us a meeting to review it. We'll have the public charrette um, towards the end of July. And then I think we can, yeah, have another round of feedback, taking everything that we've learned from Weston and Samson, everything that we've heard from the community, and we can start to drill into what all this means, right? What does is, what is community center mean to people? What, what do folks want from a senior center? How do we take those things and you know, combine them in some meaningful way with everything that we've heard. So I, I definitely think there should be two, three rounds of this that get increasingly focused over time. Yeah, and, and, uh, and just to build on that, this, this survey will really, right now we are big, very big, big picture. As we continue forward and receive responses, we get to narrow up that focus. We get to ask some more pointed questions. Okay. We've seen that 25% of you say community center. What does that mean to you? What does that include? What activities would you like to see there? Is it bingo? Is it a robotics class? Is it 
Is it um, a cooking class? Or, you know, really start to hone in on what these spaces, buildings, whatever they may, this recreation area may become. So then that way we really aren't just going from, from, you know, big picture down to a microscopic view very quickly because then we, we might lose something. So I think the timing, um, kind of almost on a monthly basis, we have a wrap up of our initial survey in June, we'll have our public charrette in July, we'll have a further drill down. So we'll just continually drill down until we get to the point where we have our final recommendations to town council to deal with, to deal with the property after we've built a community-wide consensus. Would it make sense for you to approach the Valley Breeze and give them an interview with you where you can promote the idea of participating in the census survey? So um, last Thursday, the Valley Breeze did publish an article based on the, the, uh, the survey online. Yes. So I mean, I can certainly reach out to them again and, and continually be a pain in their side to keep uh, publishing the efforts that we're trying to go through. You want to be on Coffee and with me tomorrow? I could be. At, at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 to 9. Is it a Zoom? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be, but um, just before I came in here, I had a call with Dave Bridges asking if I get in here tomorrow when I was coming into the phone and I was coming into the meeting, and he said, well, if there's anybody there that you'd like to, I use Coffee and a lot to get the word out about a lot of things. Want to join me? Um, could, could I call? Could I call them? You can call them. Yes, you can. Yes, you can call them. All right, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell Dave. It's seven six six twelve forty. We're on from eight to nine o'clock in the morning. And you can talk about this. We can talk about the survey. Perfect. Right? We'll get the word out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna be on your show, so yeah. I'll, I'll... Okay. no, but you you know, but we can ask you the questions sure. about the you know the survey and my agent needs to see the questions ahead of time though. Oh come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. I don't think, no, but I'm serious, so you can call in. Sure. Call in um why don't, why don't you and I talk? Are you gonna be here for a little while longer? Yeah, okay. Finish your work. Yeah, I'll I'll just just so we, it up. <laughs> we talk after. Okay. I don't think we're, we have two more things. Okay, go ahead. And then we, we should be good okay. to go. Right. Okay, so with that, uh, let's move on to the progress of outreach and the committee assignments. So I know at our last meeting, um, I had said that, you know, I wanted to have assign some of, or everybody some homework assignments. Um, and give out some uh, committees to, to take part in. Most of you uh, fill out the survey. So um, based on our conversation last time, we had the, the, the various boards that we wanted to, to reach out to and have discussions with. So um, I'm just gonna go through the list and, and, and put you guys on the spot. So the Asset Management Commission, it, I just, it was just me that wanted to reach out. Nobody wanted to do a reach out to the budget committee. Just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Uh, Conservation Commission, we have uh, Chris and Scott. The Economic Development Commission, we have uh, Rob Nigerian, uh, Mayo and Steve. Uh, Historic Commission, no one wanted to talk to, but we'll, we'll talk to them. Um, the Juvenile Hearing Board, we had uh, Bob and Scott. Parks and Rec, we had uh, myself, Chris, and Scott. Uh, planning Board, I figured I'd have that covered. Um, the Public Art Advisory Committee uh, was Chris and Steve. Uh, Scott volunteered for the Public Safety Commission. We're doing, we have our outreach with the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee. Uh, Steve, I was gonna put you on the spot for Town Council, the liaison. We also have um, Frank for the School Committee and um, as well as Bob and uh, Frank for the police department and Rob for the uh, fire department. I don't know, so if you want to put that in. 
if you don't want to go. Um, so again, these were just boards to have initial discussions, request that you get put on their agenda, have those members have a discussion about our initial survey questions. Let them know, you know, this is this is what our process is. Um, we want to really hear from everybody. It's one of the, those things where if, if I tell two friends, they're going to tell two friends, and they'll tell two friends. So that's that. Essentially, the um, the goal is that we just get the buzz going with all the boards. Um, we know that they have to have meetings. We know that we're going to get they can hopefully put us on the agenda so that they can have some sort of discussion. Um, so with all those, I'll, I'll send out this, this list so then that way um, you guys can coordinate. I'm not going to dictate how you guys tag team it. There's more than one of you. Um, if one you know, wants to be a spokesperson, you can both show up to the meeting. Um, but I would actively encourage you guys to get some discussions rolling uh, with everybody. Uh, Jeff, should we schedule time in a few upcoming meetings to report back on any progress? Marks? Yes. Yeah, and that, that's the other thing. We'll have a continual, continuous meeting agenda item where we can talk about what people have said um, because really that's what we're here to do. We're here to listen and then report back and then start to, we'll start to hear as we've seen with the 224 surveys that there's the, the buzzwords that are starting to really come out of this. You know, the community center, the senior center, the parks, the uh, walking trails, all that stuff. It will really start to shape how we're going to start to make recommendations based on what we've been hearing. Are you going to assign names to any committee that, or any organization or entity that didn't have a name? I figured I would take the first step and reach out, but I will be more than happy to have people assist in this matter. There, there are nine of us, so um, so if there are I am terrible with numbers. You don't want me to speak to a budget committee. <laughs> I will put that out there right now. Um, yeah, but the only reason to contact them is they're no different than any other. Exactly. They happen to be residents, therefore the input, it's just a means by which you, they may have already, some members of all these committees may have already participated. Yeah, they, they could have easily said, we've already filled out the survey. So, um, and then all you say is, thank you very much. Pass it on to your neighbors. Maybe yeah. you can send out when you update us, and yep. you can give us the missing yes. entities, and then if one of us says, well, okay, I'll take that. Okay. Perfect. All right. So that's that. I've done way too much talking for this evening. So um, our next meeting is going to be on June 17th. I will not be here, but you are in the more than capable hands of our vice chair, Chris. Um, so go easy on them. <laughs> um, but other than that, um, unless anybody has any other comments or wants to touch on any other items that are on our agenda for this evening, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, all right. This motion by Mr. Mayo, seconded by Mr. Nigerian. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.